Hi everybody, so today we're going to be talking about pertussis and pertussis is better known as whoop and cough. Now if you live in California, you may recall about 10-15 years ago, we actually had an outbreak of whoop and cough and so what the state started doing is they started requiring that every student going into 7th grade needs to get what we call the Tdap shot, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Now the reason they required it when kids were going to 7th grade is because kids going into 7th grade are about 12 years old and the Tdap shot only lasts about 12 years. So they figured kids would get it when they were born and then they would get the Tdap shot going into seventh grade. So before we get started though, let's take a look at what this is on the Tdap. And the Tdap stands for tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. So really quick, what the T stands for was tetanus. And most people associate with tetanus with lockjaw, but what they don't realize is that tetanus can actually make every muscle in your body contract and those contractions don't stop. And so eventually what happens is the heart contracts and it, it doesn't beat anymore, or the respiratory muscles will contract and you can't breathe and the person dies. Diphtheria, a lot of people aren't familiar with diphtheria. Diphtheria will form a gray membrane at the back of your throat and that membrane can, may become so thick that a person can't breathe. Diphtheria can also release a toxin into the bloodstream that will go into cells and interfere with protein synthesis. And if it does that, then the cells can't function properly. And then we have the pertussis. Now, pertussis or whooping cough is caused, it's a bacterial disease and it's caused by a bacteria called Bordetella pertussis. So when I talk, I am just gonna be talking about, I'm just gonna call it Bordetella. So let's go ahead and get started. And before I actually get started on the Bordetella, what I wanna do is I wanna go over how the body fights off respiratory infections, what the body does to prevent an infection from taking over the lungs. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a head, okay, and it's going to be an ugly head, all right, but just, I, the only reason I'm drawing this is to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. There's the mouth, it's got like this, and there's the nose, okay, there's the person's eye, and then we have the neck, and so not too worried about the head on this. But for the most part, you have two organs that I'm gonna be talking about that start basically in the throat and go down to either the stomach or the lungs, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at these. And the first one is going to be your trachea. And your trachea is better known as the windpipe. Okay, so this is my trachea right here. Now, on the trachea, the trachea is always open so you can get air into uh, into the lungs, okay? So this is going to take air down to the lungs. Now right behind the trachea, we have another organ, which we call, and this one's usually closed off. But we are going to call this our esophagus, okay? So this is our esophagus right here. All right, and this is going to be our esophagus. Now, the esophagus is going to take food, okay, and at this, at this point, once it gets to the esophagus, it's actually called the bolus, but it's gonna take food down into the stomach. Okay, so these two are going to play an important role in how our body fights off infections. So let's take a little bit more of a look at this. Now I'm gonna move my camera real quick. right about there okay and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some cells in the trachea okay so your trachea is actually made up of what we call pseudostratified epithelium so what pseudostratified means is it's more than one layer okay I'm just going to draw cells here I'm not going to be too worried about the histology for the most part so like this. Okay, and these, I'm gonna just make these my cells right here. Okay, and then on, on the trachea, now these are the cells, okay? Remember, so this here would be where the air goes. What these are is we're looking at this line right here and this line right here. So this is a tube and you're just like kind of looking at it as if it's cut in half. Air would go this way down into the lungs these are our cells. Now, you also have on here something called 
mucus glands. Okay, so here's a mucus gland right here, and here's a mucus gland right here, and a mucus gland, and a mucus gland, okay? So these are mucus glands. Okay, and mucus secretes, I'm sorry, mucus glands secrete mucus. Okay, so they're going to secrete something called mucus. Now mucus is a very thick, sticky fluid that's going to capture things you breathe in, in, in the respiratory system. It has other functions in other parts of the body. But in this case, as you breathe in, microbes, dirt, dust, whatever you breathe in, the mucus captures it, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at our mucus real quick. And here's my mucus in my glands, right? And then what's going to happen is I'm going to get mucus on my trachea, okay? And it goes, this is further down to the respiratory system too, but we're just talking about the trachea right now, okay? So that's my mucus right there. <clears throat> It's going to be my mucus, and again, it's a thick, it's a thick, sticky fluid. Now, also in here, we are going to have some cells or some hair-like extensions, which we call cilia. So I'm going to have these hair-like extensions, which we call cilia. Now, technically, I'm making the cilia look like it sticks out way past the mucus. In actuality, it doesn't. It's it's kind of like immersed in the in the mucus, but I'm doing this just so you can see it, okay? So there's my cilia, so let's go ahead and label this, okay? And this is cilia, okay? So the, the mucus is the blue part that's there, that's the thick, sticky fluid, and then I have the cilia. Now, normally the way the lungs are going to work is like I said, you breathe something in, and the mucus is going to capture it, right? And then what the cilia does, is the cilia moves this up towards the throat, okay? And I forgot to draw one thing on here, my esophagus. So here's my esophagus again. And so there's my esophagus. <clears throat> okay? So what's going to happen is as you breathe in particles and the cilia moves it up to the throat, it moves the mucus up to the throat, What's going to happen is these microbes that get caught in here end up going into the esophagus and down to the stomach, right? So it's gonna go up to the esoph up to the throat, I'm sorry, into the esophagus and then down to the stomach. Now, in the stomach, stomach acid will kill it, right? If it's microbes, it will kill it. That's the way it's supposed to work. Let's talk about what happens in pertussis. So the first stage of pertussis we call the catharal stage. Okay, this is going to be my first stage of, uh, of pertussis. Let me move this down just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to have what we call the catharal stage, and this is the first stage. This stage, it just looks like a cold. The person just thinks they have a regular cold. So it looks like the common cold, okay? Looks like common cold. Okay, so the person's gonna have a cough. They don't think they're really getting sick. But then what happens is because we're breathing in the pertussis, the bordetella attaches to the ciliated tracheal cells. Okay, it's going to attach to the ciliated tracheal cells, okay? And it releases the, what we call the tracheal cytotoxin. Now, cyto, cyto means cell. Toxin, as we all know, means it's poisonous, right? So this is going to release a, a cytotoxin that's going to destroy these cells here, okay? So I'm just gonna say that this black is my, board, my bordetella, and I get the bacteria now attaching onto here, right? And then what it's going to do is, like I said, it is going to release 
a toxin. So it's going to release a cytotoxin. So let's say this is my cytotoxin now. And this cytotoxin will start destroying all these cells. Now, when the cytotoxin destroys the cells, what's going to happen now is my cilia no longer works because the cell's been destroyed, right? If my cilia doesn't work, then what happens is I can't move things up to my throat so I can swallow them. This is no longer happening. I can't move that up to my throat so I can, I can swallow it. So what happens now is the mucus has to go somewhere. Well, if the mucus can't go up because the cilia is not working, it goes down. And we're gonna look at that right now. And that's gonna bring us into our second stage. So like I said, the, the cilia, I'm gonna draw my trachea again real quick. So here's the trachea. Okay, and then your trachea actually comes down and splits into two primary bronchi, then it goes into secondary bronchi. I'm not gonna draw all the bronchi and bronchioles, but that would be my trachea here, right? And then you have your lungs. Okay, and this is a lung, and this is a lung. So now, what's going to happen is, like I said, your mucus has to go somewhere. So now it starts to go down into the lungs. Okay, so my mucus is gonna now start to go down into the lungs, and eventually it will start to accumulate in the lungs. Okay, so here's my mucus, and here's my mucus, and it starts to accumulate in the lungs. So, What's going to happen now is the person is going to start coughing, and we call those paroxysms. This stage, therefore, is called the paroxysmal stage. So in the paroxysmal stage, what happens is eventually, because my cilia are not working from the cathartal stage, so much mucus builds up in the lungs the person actually starts to have cough and fit so they cough and cough and cough person and we call these cough and fits paroxysms Well, why the person's having paroxysms, what's gonna happen is they can't breathe. So between coughs, they gasp for air, and what happens is they make a whooping sound. And that's where the name whooping cough comes from. So they have cough and fits, which are called paroxysms. Between coughs, the person gasps for air, and makes a whooping sound. Okay, so they're gonna make a whooping sound. All right, these paroxysms can last several minutes. Now, before I go into the last stage, oh, and by the way, the coffin can be so intense that in young children, it can actually break ribs. Now, before we go into the last stage, what I wanna do is I wanna talk about another toxin because we've already talked about the tracheal toxin. There's one more toxin. And this is called the pertussis toxin. So the pertussis toxin is released by Bordetella and then what can happen with the pertussis toxin is it can get into the bloodstream and then this condition becomes systemic. So it's released into the bloodstream. And it becomes systemic. So now it can cause other problems. For example, 
For example, it can get into the lungs and it can cause pneumonia. It can also go to the brain and cause something such as encephalitis, and it can go to other organs as well. The last stage now is what we call the convalescent stage. And this is what's gonna happen with most people, is they're gonna go into the convalescent stage, because most, most people survive pertussis. In this stage, what happens is it lasts for months, Okay. And, but the person gets better. So just to reiterate, just to reiterate on pertussis, normally what your lungs do is as you breathe in, you have a thick, sticky fluid called mucus that's on your, on your trachea and your respiratory system. You have small little hairs called cilia. The mucus captures whatever you're breathing in and the cilia moves it up towards the throat. Once it's in the throat, you swallow it. It goes down the esophagus into the stomach and your stomach kills it. With pertussis, the bordetella actually attaches to the tracheal cells, releases the tracheal toxin, which destroys those cells. Now you don't have cilia to move things up, so the mucus goes down into the lungs like we have here, okay? The person has to get that mucus out of the lungs, so what they do is they start to cough it up. And so as they cough, the cough and fits, which are called paroxysms, which the second stage is called the paroxysmal stage, right? First stage was the cathartic stage. The paroxysms, uh, they can't breathe. And so as they gasp for air between coughs, they make a whooping sound. Paroxysms can last for several minutes and the, the coughing can be so intense that it can actually break ribs in long chil young children. The pertussis toxin is also released. And like we said here, it gets into the bloodstream, can go to other parts of the body and cause problems there, okay? Eventually people get into the convalescent stage and this lasts for months, but the person eventually gets better. So that's it for pertussis. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.